Jesse decided to take Tucker out uh, to catch his first wave. We actually got suited up, weathered on some sunscreen, and we paddled out, and he had a blast. What's going on? Today, Tucker's first day surfing. Oh! We're gonna go longboarding. <laughs> yeah. Boop, boop. I was I was still basically a novice surfer not very good at all so I paddle out on Jesse's really big longboard which was brand new by the way <laughs> a horrifying thing as a wife to like okay don't destroy your husband's brand new board um, so paddling out there I ended up meeting um, a super nice girl her name's Chloe Vetterly and she much younger than I is a retired professional surfer, Ugh. but she was so friendly and so helpful. She hung out with me for a little while, gave me tips on how to catch a wave and what to do when I do catch a wave. Um, and so I was able, miraculously, to to catch a wave. And it's, what a feeling. If, you, if you're not a surfer, it's really hard to explain, but when you, when you can stand up and you're riding a wave and there's no threat of like it crashing over you or you falling off and hitting a rock and you're just able to kind of glide down the wave. I remember just laughing because it was just such a cool sensation that I didn't know what else to do. And I'm sure I looked goofy and I was like standing super still because I didn't want to like fall off the board because I finally caught a wave. Jesse decided to take Tucker out uh, to catch his first wave. He was almost nine months old, so he felt like he was up to the challenge. He was holding, he's actually holding his head up pretty good now. He had a little bit better head control. He wasn't bobblehead. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have this great little baby backpack, this little baby Bajoran little thing that holds him. And I mean, hey. Keeps we, him super secure. We actually got suited up, weathered on some sunscreen, and we paddled out, and he had a blast. We're gonna go longboarding. <laughs> yeah. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> We got some mellow waves. On board, baby. Cool. All right. <laughs> Have baby fun. Surf day. Have fun, my boys. All right, love you, mom. <laughs> I love you guys. Bye. I'll be watching. We caught like four or five waves together. And it was kind of awkward at first trying to catch these waves with him or whatever. And, but we actually got kind of into this in this rhythm. And I think he, I don't know, maybe, is he the youngest baby to surf? <laughs> What do you think? <laughs> I, I'm curious what's what the youngest baby to surf is. Tucker. <laughs> we have this little doll, Hank. We, we named him Hank. Hank's Tucker's stunt devil. And stunt, stunt devil baby. <laughs> yep. Throughout Baja, we'd stick. He, Hank has this like crazy baby face, whatever. So creepy. Kind of creepy face. And I'd stick him in the cabinets, and Jenny would open the cabinet, and there'd be Hank like staring at her, you know. <laughs> we should have done that to some of the checkpoint guys. Yeah. They might have shot it though. <laughs> There was another young surfer there, and it was pretty cool watching her and her dad out on the longboard, and what a cool way to learn how to surf. Big Sister was out hanging out on the surfboard, and Baby Sister and Tucker were hanging out on the beach doing baby stuff.
Oh yeah. There you go. That's we were good. having so much stinking fun there in Scorpion Bay, we did not want to leave. So yeah. well, initially, I think we had like seven days. We, oh, stay a couple more days. And I kept like going back and doing the math on our travel time like and our dates. How can we get back to the States? And so I think we, we squeezed out a couple more days. I think we were there for like 10, maybe 11 days. We were there for quite a while. We were but, like there as long as our tanks would allow us at this point. And finally, as like our water tank is getting super, super low, uh, we, we had to start looking at how we're gonna, you know, refill our water tank. Now, oh. side note, this is a good chance to point out, we've learned so much since we've been to Baja. I like professional interviews. <laughs> exactly. We've been doing this for a while, and we've found some tricks we didn't have up our sleeve yeah. during this trip to Baja. That would have made it much easier. So while we're like counting our days down in, in Scorpion Bay as we're watching our tanks dry up, same thing happened in Punta Canejo, Pescadero, these other places we're at, we're, our, our time there was limited by our water supply. And so, since we've got, we've got two great things that I do want to share with, with those of you RVers or potential RVers mm -hmm. that make life so much better. We so bought all of these items. They were not given to us for Yeah, reviews. this isn't a sponsored thing. This is just stuff that we've <laughs> found that works for us. Yeah. So, so with that disclaimer aside, Aqua Tank 2 is what we have. We have a 60 gallon bladder essentially that we can pump full of water in our truck and then mm -hmm. take that to the RV to fill back up the RV tanks without having to move the RV. Mm -hmm. So that's a great source. Also throughout Baja, questionable water sources. You've seen us throughout this trip having <laughs> to go to aqua purificadas, which are water purification plants, where we can pump purified water directly into the RV. Mm -hmm. One, a great option we found out afterwards, which we do now have on our RV, is a water filtration system. We have a pretty kind of, kind of upper middle of the, the road uh, water purification system. We have three canisters that will purify or clean our water of everything except for viruses. They do have a, an additional kit called South of the Border, which will take out viruses as well, but that was a bigger kit. We didn't have room for it. We also so, didn't need it at the time. We just crossed back in the States from Baja. We didn't have any plans in our immediate future to go to Baja, so we, we went with the step down. And um, so the workaround is we have a chemical called Puragene. If we're ever worried about viruses or other types of illnesses that could be in the water. We still use our, our three filters and we can add a little bit of this Puragene, which is a, a, a very mild chemical that will kill anything in the water and make the water safe to drink. Some of our uh, hindsight type learning or lessons learned that, dang, if we'd had those things, we could have been really late to get back to the States with the RV Nomads film. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So we had squeezed out every minute we could to stay in San Juanico. It was just so much fun, we didn't want to leave, but finally we're like, hey, we gotta take off. I, I hate being late to places where I, we've obligated ourselves to be, and we also needed to get moving so we didn't have to have too long of travel days. So we took off, and we, when we left Scorpion Bay, we were cruising down the highway, and we we're bopping along, and all of a sudden, uh, we, I, I look up and there's little Baja race cars in front and behind us. And we're literally in the Baja 1000. <laughs> and it was so funny because we're trying to book it out of there. And I felt like this frantic, like, okay, let's get going. And then boom, we're right in the middle of this pack of race cars cruising through the, the deserts of Baja. And it was so cool. These were like, like these were like the really noisy, no, no muffler. Yeah. These, were, these were like the full on Baja off-road racers. <laughs> and we were in the lineup with these race cars. Jesse was in his element. He was so happy in this massive RV trying to keep up. And honestly, like there were some behind us. It's literally because they couldn't, they just couldn't get around us. No, like, no, 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 no. We were, <laughs> we, we, were, we were keeping up with them. Uh -huh. they, they, they were behind me because they couldn't quite get enough speed to pass me. Oh, I see. Yeah, they, yeah. They, couldn't, they couldn't see around we, our, our big old rear We weren't in the lead, but we weren't in the back of the pack either. We were, we were holding tough. Mm -mm, Ricky holding Bobby, if you ain't first, you're last. <laughs> we were not first. <laughs> But that was really cool to actually be <laughs> on the road, on the race course with the Baja yeah, race cars. Yeah. So leaving Scorpion Bay, we had to go back down to Constitution City and head back through the mountain pass 
towards Loretta. So now we're going backtracking through all these crazy roads. But it helped us to avoid some potential scary off-road roads. Yes, side note, if you find yourself in San Juanica, there is Google Maps will show you, or most of your online map systems will show you a road going directly over to the main highway. Uh, and, and, and essentially that's an off-road road. It's not a road for RVs. If you have a pickup truck, or maybe like our friends live in Give 4x4, I think that'd be a road worth considering because it would shave off probably a, at least 100 or more miles yeah. off your trip. But we've had enough bumpy roads You're on this done. trip. We're done. <laughs> We're going to stay on the paved road and try to minimize how much stuff we break. In Loretto, there's a spot where the there's a bridge over this big kind of arroyo, this big riverbed, uh, and, and the racers were just zinging underneath. So we pulled the RV over and we pulled over and watched for a few minutes, and that was really cool. And talk about like this is like I think this defines Baja. You've got all different types of race cars. Some of them like top fuel, like you're topped up. Some of the best race cars out there. Some of them were just like people went out and bought a side by side, you know, whatever. Some of them were old pickup trucks. Whatever you had, you could race some Baja is what it looked like. And then on the race course, there's plenty of people, you know, up, up on the sides watching. Over off to the side, there's literally some dudes over here with lawn chairs out in the middle of the riverbed watching the racers like up close. I mean, like right there That's where these right. race trucks are zinging past. And it's like, Hey, that's, that's, you know, yeah. it's, it's at your You're risk. risk. <laughs> you might get your butt run over, but if you want to park your seat in the middle of the racetrack, lock yourself out. Y'all, Jesse climbed back in the RV, and for the next 100 miles, I had to listen. Oh, I'd be, I'm gonna take Tucker back here one day. We're gonna build our own off road vehicle. We're gonna come do the. Maybe I'll we take are. my dad and do the. Yeah, that'd be cool. Do it with my dad, and then I'll do it again with Tucker. Yeah, we're doing it. We are definitely. If we can't, if we, if we can make it work, we're gonna. Race I mean, I'm all off. for it, but it would be. So, it would look like a lot of fun and a really cool way to get to see some wild parts of Baja. <laughs> With this challenging terrain in Baja, it would have been real nice to have a set of snap pads. We do have some now, and they make a huge difference for places like right here where we're on very uneven terrain. It gives us a larger footprint, and in our case, the prime snap pads are over three times larger than the original jack size. Consider these your RV's flip-flops from Mexico, or basically anywhere you wouldn't want to walk barefoot, that's where you need these snap pads. Um, but they're also eco-friendly, they're made out of recycled tires, which is awesome, but that way you can just set it and forget it. Check out this link right over here if you want to know more about the snap pads that we have on our RV as well as the snap pads that might fit your RV. We also have a ton of other great resources to jumpstart your trip. Yeah, things like downloads, checklists, discounts, promo codes, everything that will save you a ton of money. Hot. <laughs> At first, at first we're like, hey, look, the beaches are <laughs> empty. We got it all to ourselves. All the snowbirds went north and we get to, in oh, wait a minute. No, no, we were the schmucks that just stayed in Mexico longer than we were supposed to. <laughs> but 
what would you make it find. worth all the all the sweat and all that um, discomfort is worth it because there's one thing that's much different this time and that is the marine life has changed yes it, the water and the temperature have now made it a perfect feeding ground for the whale sharks